Good morning. Let's continue on with our study with uh, Robert Breaker, where he's going to try to convince you that God will allow works in his plan and allow boasting. And by the way, he talks about saving. Ruckman says Abraham was saved in the New Testament sense. Ruckman says Abraham was saved. This guy's always shifting on you people. And he says, well, a term. What term? You guys are using, we're using faith alone. You guys are using, you can tell me faith alone is a legitimate term. Let's see what he says about that. But he's not going to go over the verses that show boasting, works and boasting. He's not going to look at those verses. So he's going to start here over Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2 says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these by the way, he started, he, I know it's not his quote, so I, I know, may know this before. A missionary evangelist. See, that would allow him basically to collect money because he's not working. That's why he say he's not working. He's not an evangelist. Evangelists move all over the place. He takes missionary trips once in a while. He's not a missionary. He's not on a missionary field in, in somewhere permanently. The only two groups of people that have a right to be supported by the church are missionaries and evangelists. He's claiming, he's claiming both. This is the, the con this guy's running on you. And by the way, I don't know if may make some money because I saw two videos. I put this one, I had two uh, videos, uh, ads, excuse me, two ads show up on mine. Last day he's spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. I clearly see dispensations in this passage. No, no argument, dispensations. <laughs> okay. And it starts out by saying God in sundry times, different times, and in diverse manners, different ways, spake to people. God spoke to some people like this and other people like this. And he said, I'm telling you this, and I'm going to tell you that. Why is he talking to us like we're idiots? The guy talks like uh, infants. <laughs> yeah, we know that. And God told people different things throughout the Bible. So there are different ways in which God spoke. He must have said different things to different people. That's what we call dispensations. I believe in dispensations. The word dispensation is used four times in the Bible. I have some... Uh, this is why these, these things will fill up. You, you know, Brother Jason, you think this is work? It's a joke. This isn't a work. This isn't a job. This is a joke. The guy's just you're putting filler in here. He's not dealing with the subject. Yeah, we're dispensationalists. He's talking dispensationalists. He, he told people who want dispensationalists not to, not to watch, but now he's going to give us a lesson on dispensationalism. Videos on YouTube about dispensations. Now, if salvation was by faith alone in every dispensation, we should find verses in each one of those dispensations that says that it's by faith alone. Do we? Why was that? Same assumption they start with why. Why would you have to see that? We see in Hebrews 11, everything they did was by faith. We see Abraham mentioned in Romans 4. David mentioned in Romans 4. The Old New Testament sheds light on the Old Testament. So we don't have to see that, that statement put up there. We're told that in the New Testament, what they, what they were saved by. And we know from the fact of what it says in Romans 4 and Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and as he himself said, you can't have works because you can boast. Look at the assumption he puts up there. We don't have to have to be told what they specifically have to say by faith alone. We're told in the New Testament how man has to be saved. And we're given examples in Abraham and David, before the law and in the law. And we'll say, why? Why? Because uh, why can't we have works? Why Abraham couldn't be saved by works in Romans 4 says? Because he could boast before God. That's the issue. They want con you. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead, saved time, and put up here all of the dispensations. Now, some people say there's only seven dispensations. I, I think there's eight. You know, eight is the number of a new beginning. Well, God starts to rain in the money for a thousand years. So I see eight different dispensations. You can argue on how many dispensations there are, there are if you want. Okay? I get these from the scriptures themselves. I see this is how God in different ways is dealing with different people. So I put eight different dispensations up here. We're not going to go through every single one, but I'm going to go through some of these dispensations, and we're going to ask the question, is it faith alone in every one of these dispensations that saves these men? 
are these women? Is everybody in every dispensation saved only by faith? Yeah, we know what the question is, Robert. <laughs> if they were, then end the discussion. Let's all go. Yeah, it is discussion over. We got clear scripture stating in Romans 4 and Ephesians 2 the issue of works. And in Galatians, what works? The law can never save. The law couldn't give life. If the law could give give life, then the cross wouldn't be necessary. Go fishing. Let's all go get, get a hamburger. Let's forget about this. You should. See, he's not going to forget about it. We're supposed to. We're supposed to not be contentious. They can, they can just shove it down your throat. It would be so nice if that was the case. But when you read the Bible your, yourself and you study what the Bible says. You, it says. The Bible says. You don't see that. You don't see that? That's what it is. You start with the clear scriptures and then you go back to more obscure scriptures. You start where it says why man can't be saved with works. And that crosses every dispensation. They can boast. I believe that's an oversimplification of the scriptures. Now, what are these people saying who say it's faith alone in every dispensation? They are saying, I believe that people are saved the same way in the entire Bible. That's what faith No. See the lie it is? No, we're not saying they say it the same way. You, you lousy liar. We are saved, they say, by faith alone. The content of the gospel changes. Different gospel. So you have to set up the straw man just like just like Ruckman does. All these guys that set straw men, just like Brian Denley does. No one is saying that they say the exact same way. We're not saying that at all. We're saying, but the method has to be the same because God won't allow works in his system. Faith alone means. You ask someone that says, I believe in faith alone in every dispensation, you ask them, so what are you saying? Do you is is what you're saying that all people are saved the same way in the whole Bible? They say, yes, that's what I believe. I you're an idiot. We don't say that. Go to Knox, see what he says. Go to Y, Charles Y, see what they say. See, false premise, false, the false argument these guys have to set up. I've said over and over again, we don't believe the content of the gospel is the same. We know the differences in what happens after your person gets saved. We don't say it's, it's identical, but we say there are certain things that have to be similar. Similar, Faith alone has to be one of them. Regeneration, another one. Justification at the point of salvation, another one. Imputation of righteousness. Why? Because it can't be any merit. I believe all people are saved the same way in the entire Bible. Now, wait a minute. This guy's too stupid to argue against the true view. He's not going to argue against the right view, just like Brian Denley doesn't. He's going to argue against a straw man. Do you really believe that? No, no one believes that. Except, you know, some Baptist somewhere. The dispensational school of people believe, we understand this, that the content of gospel, the gospel changes, and there are different things that happen to a church age believer that doesn't happen to an Old Testament saint. But we believe in faith alone. They can't be saved with works. That is an oversimplification of the scriptures. And what you're doing is you're... He's oversimplifying the other way. Telling me... I have not read the Bible. I have read... That's what you told me. He told us we, not, we, we haven't read the Bible. The New Testament, I have got a hold of a New Testament truth that salvation today is by faith alone, according to Paul. And what I want to do is I want to take that truth and I want to project that into every other dispensation. There's a reason for that. Because you can't have works. Because works are boasting according to his own definition that he gave in the worship of salvation. It doesn't change just because the dispensation changes. The only thing that God, the only thing that gives all glory to God is faith. And I want in my mind so bad, everybody saved the same way that I was. Why would I care how everyone saved the same way? I want my mind. So we, no, it just can't be any other way. He's a moron. Yeah, I'm tired. This guy, this guy is the biggest phony. I thought Brian was bad. This guy is the biggest con man. And Brian is bad. I mean, and this guy, at least doctrinally, he's right. But holy cow, his, 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 his attitude is ridiculous. Are they? All right, in order for us to understand your position, and I... Get the position right. You haven't gotten it right. 
He's a phony. I do. I really do want to understand your position. You haven't said it. Go, go read James Knox. I would do. I read your guys' positions. Gene Kim has he, he cites uh, Knox in his uh, work on uh, justification. He doesn't. He, and he doesn't understand what Knox is even saying. Mis, mis, uh, mangles it up because they can't deal with the issue of justification in James uh, chapter two. Can't deal with it. And I believe I do. Your position is you think everybody in the whole Bible is saved the way that we are saved today. We're saved by faith alone. The content of the gospel is different. Different things happen to a New Testament saint than they happen to the Old Testament saint. Okay? I just might too deep for Breaker. It's very superficial. All right, let's look at that. What is salvation? Define to me what it means to be saved. All right, today. You regenerate. You regenerate. That's what it means to be saved. And all these people in the Abraham's bosom are regenerated. You're born again. And how do you get born again? You have the imputation of righteousness. God's righteous and, and you're justified. The only way we know what salvation is today is because we have the writings of Paul, the apostle, and the New Testament. And so in the New Testament, we find out what Paul says is saved. All right? I'm going to write down here five things that Paul tells us takes place at the moment of salvation for us today. First, we get... Christ's imputed righteousness. This is part of salvation. Getting the righteousness of God imputed to us. We also, we get justified today. At the moment of salvation, we are born again. So far, all three things happen to Abraham and David. They got God's imputed righteousness, they were justified, and they regenerated. Paul tells us that when we're saved, Ephesians... Are you telling me that the Holy Spirit went into an unregenerate man? Is that what you want to tell me? Is that what you want to tell me, Robert Breaker? That the Holy Spirit went into people who want, was on, who on, unregenerated and had a relationship with them. One thirteen. we are sealed... With the Holy Spirit. Of That's eternal security. That's a result of salvation. They weren't sealed. Their eternal security was a different way. Now he's going to set up a false premise. Because of the five things that happened, different things that happened with us, and then it all happened to the Old Testament saints, they couldn't have been saved. The first three is what salvation is about. Now eternal security, that's a different issue. How they were, how they were protected is a different issue. We're in union with Christ. We're part of his body. That's a different thing. A promise. There's a ceiling that takes place. And when we're saved, we have reserved for us a place in heaven. Why well, we get eternal security. I don't know anyone that would disagree with that. Today, in our dispensation, this is what happens when you get saved. You get Christ imputed righteousness, you get justified, you get born again, you get sealed with the Holy Spirit, and you get a place in heaven the moment you believe and trust the gospel, faith in the blood atonement of Christ. When you receive the atonement by faith, this is what happens to you. If three out of five happened to the Old Testament saints. The only thing is they went to Abraham's bosom. Their eternal security was different. The first three are what salvation is. See, he sets up the idea that that's salvation. Those are things that happen. There's a lot of also things. A lot of things also. We felt the Holy Spirit. They weren't filled the Holy Spirit. Most of them weren't. The average uh, person saved in the Old Testament wasn't wasn't up the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have everything down there. We get two natures. They didn't have two natures. He's just con man. We were in union with Christ. They weren't in union with Christ. This is all a lie, people. All phony teaching. By faith. Phony because it's part true, part, part, part false. The first three, that's what salvation consists of. Imputed righteousness, being justified, and being born again. Then the issue of being sealed is a different issue. How they were protected by eternal security. John 10 says they were held in the Father's hand. They didn't get a place in heaven. They went to Abraham's bosom because the cross hadn't been there. None of that affects their salvation. Saved people went to Abraham's bosom. 
through faith alone. So this is by faith alone that we get these things. Now you could add a bunch of other things. In. So what? This guy's such a con man, such a liar. Now that's why he doesn't take comments, people. That's why he doesn't take comments. He just lied to you, and you will think he's better than sliced slice bread. He's lying right through his teeth, talking about an unimportant subject, but he's going to lie and lie and lie to you. There are people, again, that will tell you, I believe that it's faith alone in every dispensation. So if that's the truth, all these things would happen to everyone else in every dispensation. See what false pumps No, I'm not saying that. First thing would have to happen. See that? See what a liar is? And if, if he had taken comments, I would, I would put down that he's a liar. But we'll stop here, put this up. I put it down there. Break up, well, break it, you're a liar. <laughs> that you are. Just because things will happen in the New Testament to the New Testament believer doesn't mean Old Testament people won't say. This guy set up a con. He sets up false premises. He sets up lie after lie after lie. He collects money without working. Claims to be evangelist, missionary. He's not evangelist. ex Catholics of Christ, Christ, they'll be evangelists. They go everywhere. They're not going anywhere. I'll put this up. You know, I'm going to hit the rack and just go off for work. Yeah, I'm still working. I still work. You know. I'll be rough on this, people. You, 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 you guys, he comes out there first, he tells you we don't know the Bible. Now he's just have a false argument. Oh, 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 you guys don't think it's salvation is exactly the same in every dispensation. Let me tell you, these things are different. No one was sealed in the Old Testament. No one went to heaven in the Old Testament. So we go to heaven now because the way's been cleared. Christ went to heaven. He had to go first. Then he took he took captivity captive. You see what workman has to say here? But Abraham, salvation. Saved. Chapter 15 in Genesis. Uh, the sinner is justified believing without works. The believer should carefully note that James 2 is not dealing with Genesis 15, 6, where Abraham was saved, saved in the New Testament sense. The basic trouble is that Abraham had, had imputed righteousness without anything taking place within him. So he wasn't regenerated, according to these guys. How could he talk with God? First, First Corinthians two fourteen. Natural man receiving not the things of God. How can God look at His own pure righteousness and not justify Him? It's impossible. The Christian goes through four spiritual operations the moment he accepts the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Now, see, this is the same gimmick that uh, He's trying to pull on you. His soul is cut loose from His body. His dead spirit is born again. What soul is that? That's being born again. They had to be regenerated. His soul was saved permanently. Okay, their soul was saved permanently. The Holy Spirit joins them to Jesus Christ by baptizing them into Christ's body. That didn't happen today. And part of the church. Now, none of these things happened to Abel. Oh, you a couple of them did. Hence, there's a gap between his salvation, Genesis 15, and his justification, which perfected his faith. Well, that justification was poor men. If he was saved in Genesis 15 and justified in Genesis 22, that had to be for men because he was justified. Salvation is being justified. See? This, is nutty, this is how nutty these people are. The justification in James 2 is talking about poor men. It's perfected. He wants to act like you're, or the faith is perfected. Well, you're justified. You're getting Peter righteous. You're justified and you're regenerated. God has a relationship with uh, Abraham's relationship with God and Armageddon. Why do you think Adam couldn't, couldn't have a relationship with God until he had to get born again? He can't, he can't deal with God <laughs> as an unsaved person. You have no relationship with him. You're terrified. Well, you reject him like Cain does. Cain did. But that's the nonsense you get with these guys. Set up false premises. And of course, you know what he's doing? He's preaching to people who don't know anything. And they'll just sit there and, ooh, what break, what break, oh, look at this. He's got the Bible. And we got the Bible, too. We know what the Bible says about salvation. We know it's, uh, he says it here. 
Everything's just no. When is everything exactly the same? And he said, "Fourth premise and argue like that." We say everything's identical. We understand dispensations. We understand different different gospel, different content. We understand that. But they can't deal with that. They have to argue against Strawman. But we're gonna deal more with this. This guy is, you know, the most passive aggressive person I've ever seen. He wants to basically have both ways. Smile at you. I love everybody. And then at the second time saying, Yo, oh, some people out there who are attacking me and using mean words. And he's trying to he's trying to convince guys like Jason. Jason believes in a faithful own system. He's upset about that. And Max. He can't believe that. He can't believe we won't believe people are not believing what he's teaching. That's what he's upset about. So he's had to put another video out. No comments. No comments. No guts. No guts. We're going to say one hand, we're going to say it's unimportant. But the other hand, make two videos about it and say, well, we're going to tell you what the, real, what, the Bible, what the Bible really says about this. They won't say. Buckman says they were saved in Genesis 15 without being regenerated and being justified. But he, they said, uh, Buckman says he'd be seen pretty righteous in the New Testament since he was saved. They're all over the place, people. All over the place. What he hopes, and these clowns hope, so, because you don't know what they're saying. So you can con you. And then when something comes up who no, actually knows what they're saying, like James Knox, for instance, they have to attack him like he, and say, he's, James Knox doesn't know the Bible. No one knows the Bible, but they do. Only they do. See? They're only Bible believers. None of us know. So stop being put this up. And uh, deal with more of his nonsense later. I, I, I really lost my patience with the guy. I was really going to blow off that other video and say, okay, we just move on. But he can't stand it. These guys can't stand the fact that they're wrong. Hey, basically, he's got that interracial marriage issue up, uh, thing up. He's not backing down that. And he claims to be a missionary evangelist. It's phony. Phony. Make a couple videos a day. Nice work. You can get it. Live off other people, go down, make it, take a vacation, claim it to be missionary activity. It's a con man. All these guys go to seminary think it gives them a right to live off other people. That's right. That's what they think. I got a thing on, on Ruckman where he talked about when he was running the church and you know, he was past the church. He told me how often he just go fishing. Yeah, well, you're at work. These guys are fishing. These guys are having a good time. They don't, you know. Have a sermon one Wednesday and a couple of times Sunday. What do these guys do? They expect you to continue giving them your money while you're working seven five days a week. They put up a couple of videos and they think that's work. These videos aren't sophisticated. They're just a blackboard. That guy I'm doing here. That's all. It's not like he's editing things and, you know, Max talking to Brian Dengler. Remember Brian Dengler? I need money for my videos to do this. And this. He's not putting anything in his videos. He just changed his back, backdrop. The scenery. His videos aren't sophisticated. You don't see anything sophisticated about his videos. But they want your money. And you people are dumb enough to give it to him. Well, good. <laughs> give it to him. Don't claim that this guy is a real minister. He's not. He's living off people, just like Brian is. And he was going to claim he really studied the Bible. He's going to set up a false premise. He's not even studying the, the dealing with the issues that the real dispensations are talking about. It's got to be faith alone. It has to be. Because man can boast if it wasn't. You understand that pre premise? Something he can't get through his thick head. That if take not taking the mark was a work, they could the people who didn't take the mark could boast to God and say, Look what I did, God. You think some man's gonna come up to God and be able to boast? You really think that? That's what these idiots are telling you. So we'll stop here. Put this up. Amen. Thank you.